on the bridge of the Maersk, Montana, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of the bridge equipment in more detail today. So this is the chart table. This is where paper charts used to be kept, but now that this ship is completely paperless and using digital charts, we only have paper charts for reference purposes only, not to be used for navigation. So here's an example of a paper chart for reference only. And these paper charts have been replaced by the ECTIS, which is the electronic, electronic chart display and information system. This one is made by Transus. It's one of the most common ones that you'll see out here. And it, uh, it works really well. You can do a lot of, uh, a lot of really quick things on here, like um, measure distances. Just by moving the cursor around, you can get different ranges bearings, positions. It's easy to edit routes as well, just by moving around waypoints versus having to do it all with a uh, pencil and eraser. Next up we have uh, Furuno radar. These are new to this ship this year. We have two, there's an S band, this is this one, and an X band. And I'll show you what those antennas look like after this. And uh, this works similarly to the Ectus, where you have a cursor that you can move around and select different targets. And once you click on one, it'll give you its uh, range and bearing, and the ARPA, which is, stands for the Automatic Radar Plotting Aid, will then uh, give you data on it, as, such as closest point of approach, time to closest point of approach, its speed, its distance. This is the two radars. The one on the port side, the smaller one, is the X-band radar, and the one on the starboard side is the 10 centimeter S-band radar. And this ship has two GPS units that are identical. That's the first one. Here's the second one. So the GPS's are used to give yourself a, a position, a speed over the ground, a course over the ground. Let's see, course over ground, speed over ground, position. It keeps track of distances. So right now we're transiting from Charleston to Houston and we've gone so far 569 nautical miles. Other ways of measuring distance and speed are the water log. And this is, uh, you, instead of using satellites, it uses water transducers that measure the speed and the distance through the water. So you can see the distance through the water is 575.6 miles. And you can tell it's a little bit off from the GPS, which is normal because uh, there's currents and um, other factors that affect our, our distances when they're compared between over the ground and through the water. Over here is the helm and the autopilot. There's two autopilot units. This is the Autopilot 2, Autopilot 1. Only one is used at a time. This is a gyro compass. So the helmsman, when he's steering here, will reference this gyro compass heading. We got multiple VHF radios. There's one right here. Second one back aft. This is a um, course recorder, which uh, it's a new one, it's digital. The old versions were all paper and they were notorious for getting jammed. So this is a nice bonus. These are all different signaling lights. Common use for this would be if you were not under command, you would put two red lights in a vertical line. Uh, other uses could be a single red light when you're in port to signal that you're transferring dangerous cargo. We got various uh, fire alarm panels here. This is the AIS, which is the Automatic Identification System. This is a really important and kind of a new feature on ships where it'll broadcast to your ship's position and course and speed to other ships. So our information is getting broadcasted and we're also receiving this information from other ships. And then it's all connected over to the Ectus. So let's find a target. 
So for example, if we zoom in right here, the motor vessel Fort Jefferson. So it's broadcasting its AIS information through the AIS unit. And then it has a nice way of visualizing it on this chart here. And you can click on it and get all its information. CPA, closest point of approach, time of closest point of approach, course over ground, speed over ground, heading, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the type of ship it is, its name, its call sign. So it's really easy to be able to hail other ships now by their name, where in the past you had to call a, position, uh, call a ship by its position or its course and speed. It just makes it much easier to handle traffic situations. This is the echo sounder right here. We're not actually in two meters of water. Uh, we're in pretty deep water right now, so it's not getting a good reading on the, on the bottom. This is a computer that shows uh, all the engine alarms and other alarms throughout the ship. These modern ships have a lot of automation, a lot of sensors, so if anything goes wrong, it'll alert the duty engineer and the bridge, and uh, it'll tell you exactly what the issue is so that it can be rectified. This is an EOT, which is an engine order telegraph. By using this handle, you can give a telegraph command. So right now we're ordering 58 RPMs and it's actually running 58 RPMs. So if we wanted to speed up, you just push down, push forward on the throttle. And uh, if you wanted to slow down, you pull it back. When they're giving different bells, you just move it into the notch. So we have stop, dead slow ahead, slow ahead, half ahead, full ahead. Same thing for stern bells. Dead slow astern, slow astern, half astern, full astern. This is our light indicator panels. Every navigation light has an upper and a lower. Therefore, if one burns out, you can switch to the other one until the first one can be fixed. The ship has a bow thruster and a stern thruster. Very helpful for docking and undocking. Although we still take on, most of the time, uh, two tugs, one on the bow and one on the stern. The phone to be able to call every room and every uh, crew member on board. This is a sound powered phone. So if you need to, it only goes to certain areas that are listed right here. So in case the main phone is not working, then you have a backup. This is the radio room. It houses the MFHF radio, medium frequency, high frequency radio. Um, we still carry these, although they're, it's more, it's being replaced now more by satellite communications like these, which is uh, sat C. Uh, you can send emails or messages over the satellite. There's also all kinds of other satellite phones and there's now satellite internet with Wi-Fi on board. This is all the deck lighting panels here. So every light on the ship can be turned on and off from here. Second uh, Ectus screen right here and a ship computer to do all of the paperwork that we have assigned to us on board.